So we offer up this mass for your intentions, my intentions. O chosen people, proclaim the mighty works of him. Called you out of darkness into this wonderful light. Alleluia. May your Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed may ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for Lord God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us. Lord, have Lord, let's pray. Oh God, when the celebration of Easter greatly gives to the world, healing of heavenly remedies, the present and the servant, benefit of our eternal your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for death. A reading from the Apostle, the Father almost the whole city gathered in the Lord. The island of Jesus contradicted what Paul said. But Paul spoke out and said, it was necessary that God be spoken to. Did you reach the continuous as unworthy for eternal life? Now, not to Jesus. The Lord handed us, I have made you a light, and may be a salvation to the ends of the earth. The Gentiles were delighted when they heard this and glorified the word of the Lord. All who were dead for eternal life came to leave. Lord, continue to spread the Holy Spirit. The Jews have a sight of it, a promise to a worship. And the leading of the servant of persecution against Paul and Barnabas. So they took the dust from their feet and protest against them. And when they died, the disciples were filled with joy in the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. So the Lord, new song, for he has done one deeds by hand and has grief him his whole arm. The Lord is salvation known in the sight of the nations. He's revealed his justice. He remembered his and his faithfulness towards the salvation of Israel. The ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break in song. If you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples. You will know the truth, says the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you know me, then you also know my Father. For now on, you do know him and have him. To Jesus, Father, and that will be. Jesus said, to him, "If I've been with you for so long, long a time, and you still do not know me, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, 'Show 
my father. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and Father is in me? The words that I speak, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his, his works. Believe me, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, believes in me, you will do the work that I do. And you will do greater ones than these because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do. So that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything of me in my name, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. All right, my brothers and sisters in Christ. So, you know, we see in the first reading, and this is a, Paul's a first missionary journey, that they're getting pushed back. And actually, conspiracies against them, right? I mean, the, the word, uh, uh, when the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and would violent abuse predicted what Paul said. So I don't know what that violent abuse was, but if not, uh, they actually got physical with them, maybe pushing them around, whatever. Uh, uh, but uh, violent verbiage, maybe even threats, threats, similar types of things they did to Jesus. So here they're contradicting and they're in conflict with what Paul and Paul are saying, but they're manifesting the exact same Fulfilling the prophecy, really, uh, of, of what Paul and Barnabas were talking about, right? That indeed the Jews persecuted all the prophets and then persecuted Jesus Christ, put him to death. Now, those who are proclaimed to be witnesses of this crucifixion and the risen Jesus are being treated in, in the same way. But here, here's what's important Paul and Barnabas don't back down not an inch, not an inch. Now they don't push back. Peacefully. They don't uh, respond peacefully and prayerfully, but they do not back down. And they really don't back down. They say, but since you reject us and condemn yourself as unworthy of eternal life, in other words, we're giving you the opportunity for eternal life and you're rejecting it. You're rejecting and this is very so Jesus with Jews. Right? I mean, talking about Gehenna, talking about condemnation. Um, Jesus doesn't didn't desire anybody's condemnation, does not desire, he desires all be saved, none be lost. But if you really care people's salvation, if you really care about their soul, you should have confront them with the Dangers of eternal damnation. And we're just not seeing that in the culture today. We're just not seeing this in this whole call to repentance. That's why in the Luminous Mysteries of the Rosary, when we pray the Luminous Mysteries of the Rosary, and I hear, you know, the, the third Luminous Mystery of the Rosary, the proclamation of the King. No, and the call to conversion. And the call Coercion. We never hear about mortal sin. We never hear about hell. We never hear about eternal damnation. Uh, this is deemed negative. This is deemed negative. Fear the Lord. The beginning of wisdom. That is the starting point. That is the starting point. And of course, that's where where Paul gets. To. You know, you want to use. Right? And this is no different than what Moses told people. Right? Told the people, choose life. Choose, choose it. Right? The blessing of the curse. Choose it. Right? And so, you know, we have much to learn, right? From how the apostles and the Acts of the Apostles, the early church. And now you're talking about people. Ignorant of Christ, right? Ignorant of the gospel, right? And yet, we're not afraid immediately once they're willing to accept the words of Peter and push back. I mean, uh, Paul pushed back on it 
he talked about eternal damnation, right? And we wipe our dust from your feet, right? Again, understanding, all right? Understanding, he's just told them. Uh, uh, no begging, no begging. And there's history in the church about this. I mean, you know, St. Bernard, the profound words of St. Bernard that says, look, it's not my job to convince you. It's my job to tell you the truth. It's my job to convince you. But in age, my brothers and sisters in Christ, there are a few that are actually proclaiming the truth, the whole truth, the whole truth. The disciples suffered this abuse, but they were filled with joy and spirit. Filled with joy. They'll persecute you. They'll insult you. They'll say every kind of thing about you because of me. Rejoice and be glad. Rejoice and be glad. My Mother Teresa says it's not our job to be successful. It's our job to be faithful, faithful to the gospel. Proclaim the gospel. And if the people reject it, we pray for them. I call them to pray. We all right, there we wipe their dust from our feet, but we pray for them, fast for them, the conversion of the world, atonement and reparation for our sins. You, you hear that in every single mass. I do the same, the same prayers of the faithful every single mass. All right, and it's all about you know, conversion and reparation. On the gospel, we see still early in the homily at the Last Supper. Theological gospel, the theological discourse, and uh, Jesus again is, is emphasizing, and and this is important. Again, I want to point out that Jesus is going through this uh, re-emphasis that he and the Father are one. If you've seen me, Philip, you've seen the Father. The Father and I are one. Go back and read the Eucharistic. I've mentioned this a couple of times now in the last couple of weeks. How many times Jesus mentions the Father directly or indirectly? So, so this is the fleshing out. This is the, the last supper that Jesus talked about in the Eucharistic discourse. We need, we need all this in context. You put it all together. The uh, homily, the last supper by Jesus is very, very Eucharistic. Tomley talk about the vine and the branches. All right, how do we stay attached to the vine? The Eucharist, right? Uh, uh, remain in Jesus, remains in us. And we're going to hear more and more about that. And then Jesus, as we get into the next chapter, 15, which may be, of course, we're going to di digress from this tomorrow in the seasons and pick it up again on Monday. Maybe it'll be Monday when Jesus starts talking. Uh, exactly what's going to happen to the apostles. But we can't be afraid of persecution, death, even martyrdom. We right? can't be afraid. And that's why Jesus says what? The first words we hear, he starts off his homily with what? Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. We're here for one reason, one reason only, to achieve eternal salvation. How do we do that? God, all conversion and do we want a reparation for our sins? Obedience to all that Jesus taught. Let us now I ask our Father in heaven to shed mercy in all of our needs for the Catholic Church, the bishop, priests, deacons, religious, for our seminary study for the priests of those discerning religious life, the mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, that everyone, all of us in our vocation may desire to do all things in humble obedience, but praise, honor, and glory of God, the atonement of reparation for our sins, atonement of reparation for all the sins that started the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and for charity and chastity, our vocation, we pray to the Lord. For Eucharistic unity amongst all Christians, for peace in the world, for the end of all the vicious attacks in our culture, against the sanctity of life, marriage, and family, for the least of Christ's brethren, the unborn, the poor, the sick, the 
the naked, the homeless, the hungry, the imprisoned, for all those suffering any trial or tribulation, whether it be physical or spiritual. They find comfort in Jesus as we reach out to them. In spiritual and corporal works of mercy, we pray, pray Lord. And for the particular to this mass, the intentions we hold in our hearts, your intentions, my intentions, uh, the intentions of all, all those who we said we would pray for, including those who may forget to pray for, for the intentions of those who pray for us, encourage, support us each, each single day. And for the souls in purgatory, especially if you have no one pray that. If you are deceased loved ones and family members, we pray to the Lord. We ask for this, we ask for all good things through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. In the name of the Lord and dear Jesus Christ. Bless you, Lord God, of all creation, for your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, tree of good wine we offer you for the vine, work of human hands, become our spiritual drink. My brethren, and my sacrifice and yours may be accepted, to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sent the gifts, O Lord, we pray in accepting you know, the spiritual sacrifice made us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to proclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, Lord, you yet more gloriously when Christ our past has been sacrificed through him. The children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and his rising life has risen. Therefore, overcoming with paschal joy every land, every people else in your praise, and even the end of sing the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we receive. But upon them like the dew falls, that they may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he was betrayed, then the willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up. In a similar way, when someone was dead, he took the chalice and once more thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all, uh, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by the cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, 
the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving that you've held us worthy to be in your presence. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church pray throughout the world and bring it to the bliss of charity, together with Francis, our Pope John, our Bishop Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection of all who have died in your mercy. To the light of your face, have mercy on us all. We pray with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. May Mary and co heirs to eternal life may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, O my Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and give us our trespasses and forgive those who pass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. To deliver us Lord we pray from every evil grace and grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy may be always free from sin and save from us as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ you said apostles peace I leave you my peace I give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church peace and unity in accordance with your will live and reign forever and ever peace of the lord be with you always lamb of god you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us lamb of god you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us lamb of god you take away the sins of the world grant us peace Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Father, I wish that where I am, those you give me may also be with me. That they see the glory that you gave me. Hallelujah. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of the sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that 
And what your son commanded us to do, then may bring a growth of charity through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. So the archangel defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke. We humbly pray, O do thou, Prince of the Abbeos. By the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You Reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave Maria. Thank you, my brothers and sisters of Christ. We join us tomorrow. Mass is at 10 o'clock Eastern Time. 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Fifth Sunday of Easter. Go out to the world and give them heaven. God bless you.